So when the patient is, wa is uh, walking into the room, this is their vision. They are not turned around this way. So it's about form and function. So we're paying attention to where the patient is, is, is uh, looking, but we need all of our stuff in this zone to, to work efficiently. So the workstation allows us, uh, allows us to do that. Um, I'll stand a little bit like that so you can see. Your 90% profile, that's that one week's worth. It's on this tub here and this tub, this consumable supply as well. And then the end of the week, this gets brought in and now I can bring it into my central sterilization area. Remember I said sterilization starts here? So your sharps, you can go here. But so gauze, whatever your rules and regulations are, your trash is here. So if I drop something, pick it up, throw my glove away, grab a new glove, keep going without kind of skipping a beat. You have the, Dr. Ray said about five to six cubic, five to seven cubic feet of, of workspace. So he's dictated this way and this way. What did you say, doctor? Yeah. Oh, you're right. Uh, you know, so let's do this. I need a patient. Who wants to be a patient? Well, this chair is super comfortable. Dr. Morris, go ahead and, and press, uh, I think, two. Mm -hmm. It is. So this <laughs> will articulate. We want four feet. That, those lights should not be shining in her eye. So those are designed to illuminate the work surface. Go ahead and, and traverse forward for me. And the reason why it's off is because somebody's pushed this chair and has got it out of my sweet spot. You, yep, that's right. D Dr. Potts, do you remember how much space you need? It's okay. You, you knew the why. That's the most important. You need four feet from center of the headrest to that back uh, wall, the drywall. That way, the doctor is free to circulate 7 o'clock to 12 o'clock. So I'm going to, because I already got somebody in the chair, right? I got somebody in the chair now. I'm not going to be sliding in a 500-pound chair with somebody else in it. So traverse. There you go. So the old school chairman chairs, and then they, you know, Dr. A, when we first opened up um, Seekonk, so it's 2010, he still had the old school with like the, the laminate on the back. It was still working, still working. I remember. Mm-hmm. So we, we thought that that was an important feature. So if you had, if room depth was an issue, you can, if you had somebody really tall, you can scooch that, that patient on back. Or if you're tired of saying, come up, come up, mm -hmm. just push them over to you. Or depending on the provider, they might need a little bit more space. So the traverse feature is, is awesome. When you're practicing, is this kind of your, put, it, put the chair in kind of your go-to position. How is it? Put it eating. And can you um, shut the lights real quick? So this light here is designed so you can, you can tackle psychology of space. So there's no harsh lighting, but also you can dim these lights or you can shut them down if you were doing some type of sedation and just kind of set the stage for everything. So now you have the intraoral light that's, that's for the oral cavity. And then you can adjust those spotlights to illuminate your work surface. So there's two there um, for your left-handed, right-handed. You're righty, correct? You're going to use the left side here to line up with the patient's left shoulder. And the, that's where the marker for the assistant, but they do get flexibility if they want this farther or, or push uh, a little bit out of the way as well. Um, to the patient's left shoulder. And you're speaking of the... Um, uh, Corian, oh, okay. the Corian piece. Okay. And I should be. 
Um, this piece right here, Dr. Potts. Yeah, the Koran, right? Yeah. So this should be... You got it. Roughly here. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. No, no. Thank you for bringing that up because this has got to be the number one call that, that I get. Or, you know, if something were to pop up after training. It's usually six months or a year down the road. They got new team and they lost some of the basics. The positioning is very, very important. If not, it's going to feel really odd and really obtrusive and it needs to feel comfortable. So the chairs have the waterfall. So they force you to kind of engage in your core a little bit. And I'm, I'm a little too high, but you want to, you want, once you fix the geometry and you get things where you can use them, now you can pull off the belly bars. Do not pull the belly bars off unless you make these changes because you will have a revolt on your hands. Okay. Right? But what's the number one thing and would you say why belly bars? You're on the hygiene side. Mm -hmm. Have you done assisting? Yeah. So... What was the big thing for you assisting with that belly bar? They keep me from tipping over on them. That's right. The lean over or not. Mm -hmm. That's right. Do you know why you got to lean? You're so far away. Ah. The other thing, um, so for, from that, the other problem is if you ever paid attention to the, your posture in one of those, it's like this. Dentistry is bad enough on our backs as it is. We don't need to give it more room for damage. And then number three, you need two hands, not just one. So once this is, this is correct, now you can get rid of that belly bar so I can get in closer. Now I got the waterfall to kind of engage my core, keep my back straight. The most ergonomic for me, for the assistant, would be the interleg lock like this. If this is not comfortable for you, then you can also do the side saddle where your knee would be here. And I just need to, to just move a little bit more. But this is going to be that go-to. So when you noticed in the video with Sue Ann, she's just looking here. Uh, it's very intentional. She's got her 90%. So if anything pivots from the non-standard, she can adjust. Now she's closer. She, if you notice when she's passing, she's always making sure Number one, it's, it's angled to the tooth that it's working on. But if you notice, when they're passing, they pass low. And that's so that the doctor doesn't need to lift their eyes up. Because every time you do that, now you have to reset. Okay. So we want it low. So if we can pass this way, fine. If not, that's okay. It's one of those office preference um, things. But we want to get it like this. So now, if we have a standard in place, I haven't done an interproximal filming film in at least five, six years, maybe. But I still know that after X prime bonds, okay, we're always going to do flowable, cow horn, then compactable, just a little, pair, light cure, then keep packing. That was our standard. 80% of the time when we were doing a uh, interproximal filling, that was the sequence. Didn't matter if I was working with Dr. Fern or Dr. Miranda. So now I don't need to think about that. So what am I doing? I'm focusing and looking in the patient's mouth and instead of being reactive, I'm trying to be proactive. And I can, I can pivot and this thing saved me many, many times because you, as you can tell, Dr. Hearn is my mentor, but he'll push you, right? So you can become better. After I got a little bit more comfortable and you know, through all the change, right? So once I got that aha moment, I'm close enough. I know what our standard is. So I'm seeing. So he's calling off a jar store. I'm looking. You don't have water issues where you're going to be calling off a jar store that you never, ever use. He just wanted to see if I'm on my game. That's fine. And I already had, I'm bringing in a cassette, handpiece, burr block. That's it. 80 to 90% of the time. That other 10 to percent to 20, we're bringing in our rapid cards. But if you need to pivot, you have it here. So don't worry about is your setup 100%. Just worry about the next step because you got the bin here to back you up. So anesthetic, topical in place, anesthetic, rinse. I just opened up three minutes to finish my setup.